These stories and other people's emotions and feelings are what drive us. A book wouldn't be interesting if it was all just beautiful imagery with no substance. Story? Why is story always the focus of a movie? Is there a movie out there that doesn't focus on story? Well, yes, there are plenty of examples. Let's talk about action movies for a moment. Because action movies either forget the plot or pay very little attention to the plot. The reason is simple. Because people watch an action movie to see action. They don't really care about the plot when they watch an action movie. For example, John Wick. Let's talk about the story in John Wick. A man kills a dog and the dog owner kills everybody. That's about it. That's the story of John Wick. It sounds very dumb on paper, but John Wick is one of the most critically acclaimed action movies ever made. So we can see that plot isn't always the case when it comes to how good a movie is. So film school advertisements, you've got to change that thing, guys. Come on. So today I'm going to talk about some movies that I really enjoy that are about nothing or have very little story. Let's start with French's Ha because this is a movie that I watched this morning and it's the really easy pick to just talk about a movie that I watched this morning. That's like my life motto. Always go with the easy way. If it's easy, then it's right. French's Ha was directed by Noah Boombach and uh, it stars Greta Gerwig and Greta Gerwig is now the wife of Noah Boombach. Congratulations, I guess. I think that ever since Noah Bumbach collaborated with Greta Gerwig, his films have become considerably better and also has a more hopeful tone. And not to say that the old Noah Bumbach movies are bad, but the newer ones, when he started collaborating with Greta Gerwig, has become better. Greta Gerwig and Noah Bumbach has many collaborations, but I think that this is their best and also their first. Frances Ha is their first collaboration and this movie isn't about anything really. It's just about a girl who comes to New York City and he tries, she tries to survive basically. She meets new people and she tries to find a place to live and she tries, tries to earn money, she tries to find a job. Yeah, that's about it. There's no character development in this movie. There's really not much to this movie. But it can really relate to a lot of audiences because of the themes that this movie tackles. It's about finding a place to live, it's about finding money, and you know, that's pretty much what all of us are doing. The next pick on this list is going to be Jim Jarmusch, Stranger Than Paradise. Stranger Than Paradise is the first Jim Jarmusch film, and you have to be on Jim Jarmusch frequency to uh, enjoy this movie because you have to understand that Jim Jarmusch has a very distinct style. He likes to make slow, quiet movies that really aren't about anything. But if you really can uh, learn to enjoy Jim Jarmusch style, then you can find a lot to enjoy in Stranger Than Paradise. This movie has a very cynical tone and there are a lot of really fun scenarios in this movie. Although I don't think that any of the scenarios really connect with each other because this movie is just a lot of moments but then what is life but just a series of moments. I think that is the wisest thing I've said this year. Next movie is Jim Jarmusch again, Patterson. Patterson is one of Jim Jarmusch's more recent efforts and it stars Adam Driver in a role that really shows you Adam Driver is more than Kylo Ren. He's a really really good actor. And he does very subtle acting in Patterson. As expected, this is a Jim Jarmusch film. Uh, most of the performances in this movie are very subtle. This movie is about a bus driver who is also a poet. And I think I, I like this movie so much because it doesn't focus on superheroes. You know, it doesn't focus on astronauts. It doesn't focus on presidents. It focuses on the, uh, aspects of life that are smaller. It focuses on a bus driver uh, listening to the conversations of uh, his customers, things like that that are 
really really small but then I think that life is just full of small things and you really have to start enjoying the smaller things in order to enjoy life and that is what Patterson is it's a celebration of the little things in life because you know life isn't full of big fantastic amazing sequences sometimes life is just a lot of small things stringed together it's like how my life doesn't have anything big my life is basically just an endless string of constant failures next pick on this list is going to be Clerks directed by Kevin Smith sorry I've forgotten the film for a moment there I have no idea why it's just like my mind just went blank for a second Clerks is a very funny comedy which sets it apart from all of the movies that I mentioned earlier because this movie is a comedy and it's filled with jokes it's basically just one joke after another joke after another joke basically the life of the character in this movie is a joke his whole life is a joke like me his whole life is a joke uh, there's a lot of jokes in this movie that work and very little that don't work which makes this a very enjoyable movie although it doesn't have a story a lot of the jokes are actually very funny although you have to understand that this is Kevin Smith and his sense of humor is usually very dirty but if you can get over the fact that a lot of the jokes in this movie are very dirty I think that you can get a laugh from this movie just don't show it to your kids or whatever just show it to your kids let them grow up the next movie also the final movie on this list is also the movie that I like the most more than any of the other films that I've mentioned is Lost in Translation. Lost in Translation is about two Americans in Japan finding friendship. That sounds very weird. Basically, it's about strangers uh, finding connection in a strange land. Whoa, that sounds nice. That really sounds nice. Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson gives out very subtle performances in this movie and you can really feel their emotions coming off the screen although they don't really uh, show it much with their facial expressions but you can really feel it you can feel the emotions that's how authentic the emotions are in this movie most of the time in this movie nothing really happens it's just Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson's characters meeting each other and doing stuff sometimes they don't even do stuff Sometimes they just stand there and look at a faraway place or look at each other or look up or look down at the floor or close their eyes. Sometimes nothing really happens but I think that it is a very accurate depiction of loneliness because if you're lonely and if you're in a strange land like Japan which in the case of this movie is Japan and you can really understand what everyone else is saying you can't really connect with any of the other Japanese people there then you can you start to feel lonely and when you start to feel lonely you know the whole world slows down so I guess that's what this movie is trying to do it's trying to slow down everything which makes this movie slow and quiet and it might bore some people but give this movie a chance and you can really see the beauty in this film and I am sure that if you give it a chance and you really dive deep into what this movie is trying to make you feel I think that you're going to feel very emotional by the end of the movie like I did for the full experience of Lost in Translation watch this movie in Japanese because it's Lost in Translation get it? Lost in Translation? <laughs>